My name is Carlin. Welcome to my channel. Disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. Things you see me doing in my videos are probably not the best way you could do things. Sometimes I know better. Sometimes I will eventually learn about a better way. I don't go out of my way to be dangerous though. So if you see something, go ahead and mention it in the comments. I really do like the following sayings, even though they probably are cliche. Do what you can with what you have where you are. And from the military mindset, improvise, adapt, and overcome. Or more recently, something I've been using a lot, fabricate or die. With all that said, the following video is a record of how I did something. You probably can do better. It's not my job to be here telling you how to do something, okay? You have been warned. On with the show. All right, if you've been around a while, you've probably seen this. The idea was a single unit that would charge all the batteries I had for the tools. I've, the way it worked out, I've got like, these are all 12 volt Bosch tools, all right? They use that kind of battery that goes into here. I've got four batteries, six tools, three chargers. Yeah, symmetry, right? For this one, I'm going to ignore my 18 volt Bosch tools. These are older NICAD technology. However, they are actually pretty good if you get the newer batteries. I'm not going to use any of these in what I'm making. Okay, we're also going to ignore my Flexvolt DeWalt saw, which is awesome. 60 volt max Flexvolt. That thing is just built my house with this. Love it. So that means these two chargers are going to get pulled out. And it doesn't have to be very big, but what I want is probably the chargers in the bottom with a power strip with a single cord that comes out. Then above that have all of the tools. I don't think I'm going to buy any more of these. I mean, they're great tools. I just have enough of them. So, you know, I can build it to fit the the five drivers in the one resup saw. One to drill the hole, one to countersink, one to run the screw in. And I'm going back and forth between the three. So this would be kind of bottom tr bottom tray or something like that. It could be just this simple that they just kind of sit with the bits facing down. So I, you know, this was one piece. I cut slots on the table side by just going across the blade a couple times to make each cord hole. And then I came up a layer. And so this is a new piece here. You know, so I just kind of kept going through the scrap pile and, and I can put a battery in there one handed and I'm not plugged in so obviously the light didn't come on but I can just pull it up. Oh, sometimes it works. Because batteries have a lot of um, friction on the contact points. Okay. So the idea of this top piece was to keep the whole battery charger from coming out. So you kind of have to have one hand on it. Right? The issue is these guys. Oh man, do they got friction on them. Like there's no way. You got to have a hand on it. They really grip. You know, it's, it's a very robust connection. Okay. So one of the things I was looking at and some of the people commented, yeah, I could take these screws out, put longer screws, actually mount this to the bottom from the bottom. That could be an idea, but I don't want to block the vents. So this is a good start, but it wasn't quite enough to get them to stay in. And I also want to make sure there's enough room that the tool with a battery installed can be in, 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 the, in the case. Okay. So I will typically have at least one in a charger and one in a, in a battery. That's kind of how it starts though. Perfect. <laughs> so 12 inches is there. So 16 inches would be plenty of room. I don't need a full two by four. I think when I built this, that's just what I had available. So if I do 16 inches at 12 inches deep, okay. So 16 by 12, and then it doesn't have to be very high. 12 inches high would be plenty. All right. I kind of sketched it up just, you know, a starting point, right? And then I'll put that up on the, on my French cleat. That was kind of the whole idea that I came out of drawing close by, right? Kind of cool. Uh, the other thing I was just looking at on the fronts of these, I got kind of a round profile where the light is. And since they're all, you know, the 
the same basic design. They all have basically that round face. The drill is a little bit different, but it still has a round face. Okay. It's going to haunt me. Do I have one more of these tools that I am not finding right now? <laughs> Let me date myself. You buy a cassette case for 60 tapes and then you end up with 62 tapes, right? For your, for your 8-tracks, right? Yeah, there you go. Maybe I go too big and make a hole saw that big. That would let them slip in nice and easy. Alright, that kind of gives you an idea how I built this up. I just would go in the scrap pile and find random pieces and then cut them on the table saw to get them to fit. Uh, this was what I did a couple years ago. Those two big chargers are a slightly different generation and so they had a little bit different shape to them. So I had to make a different piece to fit each one of them. Simple enough though. And that, that piece all got glued together. I think I like having the 2x4 there. I'm going to keep these chargers and this piece together and then I'll rebuild the bottom of this later. So I'm going to just get these out of, the, out of the way for now. Keep this here so that I remember to leave room for it. And this goes this way. And since that works, I'll just keep it. Okay. So I know I want to leave a little bit of slack. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this whole thing across the, the table saw and just cut it off so I have enough room to put this on there. Somewhere about there. enough. One of those pet peeves. Why do they have to put a stapled on barcode on every piece of 2x4? On solar, maybe you don't need to fill the whole tank all the way up. The cut was perfect. The line was crooked. This one I loaded some longer brads. So from here we can start building up. So I've got existing screw holes that I can use. assortment of little scraps like this just if nothing else I can use it for a, a starting point let's see how does this fit now that's not bad though okay totally guesstimated but this is a 15 degree from vertical cut and I'm going to put the flat side against here and the taper side against that. It's not exactly the same angle, but if I just kind of bump it in, it'll work. It'll hold it down. So I'm going to trim this to be even with this. I'm going to leave it just a little bit long so that when I tighten the other one down, it'll lock it in. So I just did a uh, not very straight line. <laughs> I'm going to go with this end. You know, the funny thing is, bonus points, it looks like nicer wood now. It's old scabby, this leftover from the solar panels, I think. 
this probably isn't quite straight that's why it's not quite going true but it's pretty close yeah that's working okay so that's that's basically solved that problem Good. I didn't screw it down to the table. I'm still gonna have to hold on to this thing. I mean, literally, I'm picking the whole thing up by the battery. But at least now the chargers aren't moving, which they did before. So this is we're better. We're definitely better. Ah, come on. My next plan to revolutionize the world is to make a tool with an easy to remove battery. I haven't found one yet. Okay, let's see if we're even close on this. So, there's our hole carefully clamped into position, and we're going to have to take a random tool. Did I grab the wrong one? <laughs> That's considerably bigger than I thought it was. Hang on. This one. After I went through all the trouble to find a good piece of scrap. Okay, I'm going to just measure it. It's about a two inch hole. Okay. And that does work better. So the, the rounded part of the face drops into that nicely. Actually pretty good. Not all these are exactly the same. Those two are designed. It's a little sloppy, but it'll work. The drill has it so much longer on the chuck, but the actual face is almost the same. So that basically works. Okay. I go a little more than that even, then I got room to reach in and grab one. So the first one down in the hole. I know about how much room I would need to grab it. So if I just hold this one in the right spot, I can still get my hand in between. If it's any closer than that, I have trouble. Actually, the tool has kind of a, a mold line in it, so I can just figure out my center line from that. So I'll start with, I'll just, yeah, if I put my holes three inches apart. So with that, I've got enough room to reach in and grab one without hitting the one next to it. So that's perfect. I think we're right on. So three inch spacing is what we're looking for. Mock it up with the scraps first and if I like it then I got a starting point. So with the bit sticking out the bottom. Alright, so the cords would come out. Okay, that one would be too long. That's the nice thing, these are little cords. They aren't like wall warts. They just put regular plugs on them. Oh, that would work. I've got room, I can move the power strip up off the bottom so that it tucks in closer. And I've still got clearance between the drill bits and this. Coming up one more two by four high is plenty. And then Reason took over. This may not go through. So we started off with a round hole and then just extended it down to pass through. Now we'll pass it through plug side down from the inside. Comes right through, everything's good. So now we got a clamp there that'll keep this thing from getting pulled around. Okay, so now we got a little two blocks put together to hold that. Nice and that's snug. It's not going to go anywhere. Yeah, I like that. It worked out good. This is getting a lot of little improvements from the original design that it was just like just good enough that day, and then I never went back to it. I always wanted to. So now's the day. I'm not sure if this warrants a close up or not. A couple wraps of electrical tape. 
Not that we need electrical tape for that, but it does seem to work pretty well. Now what I'm doing now, I got my flush cutters. And the idea is you can cut off a zip tie super flat so that the point that would usually stab you doesn't, which is nice. But I think I'm going to leave this open because I want to have access to that switch. All right, lunch is over. <clears throat> Best darn can of chili mac ever. From what I remember, it went down pretty fast. All right, so this is going to be the top piece. I uh, marked where the holes are going to be. The holes are three inches apart. All right, so I put it, you know, zero, three, six, nine, twelve. Okay, that's one, two, three, four, five marks. And the first one, it's about three inches from the edge, which was like, okay, anywhere in there would be fine. So I, I kind of eyeballed it, just pick my starting point so I'd have enough room on this side. And this is, you know, the right hand, or actually in this case, the left hand side is easy because I can grab it with, you know, sticking out quite a ways. And the same on the right hand side, I could grab it right handed and I wouldn't hit anything. And what I did is I, I was kind of like looking at my fingers. I'm like, okay, a one inch bit is about right. Okay. So... Then I put my hand across the board and I marked the outer edges of my hand. So then I marked where I'm going to do the four holes and I'm going to try it on one. If I like it, I'll just transfer them to this one. Okay. That will be my handle on the top. Then I can just reach in. I got finger holes and I don't have to put my hand all the way in. I'll just grab it with my fingertips and go. Spacing off and doing something else. Looks like the right one. This is a one inch spade. Okay. What I've been finding happens here a lot. When you get close, the outer side of the bit has the edge cutters and you'll end up with a little disc that falls out. So once you break through both sides, stop and you can pop this out for some reason. Wooden wheels for your toys or something. Okay, so basically, your own wooden knuckles. <laughs> that works. Done. <laughs> This is, this is the way to do this. That'll work. I'm completely okay with that. Okay, we're getting close. So I got it loaded up. I got three batteries and tools on the top. So we'll add a little bit more to it, but I just kind of wanted to see where the balance point is with it all loaded up. And looking at it right now, actually the batteries here are about in line with where the batteries are in the chargers. So if I just kind of pick it up with my finger, if I can, this is heavy actually. Yeah, it wants to tip towards me. Okay. Last time, why not make it better? That'll be all right. I'm not trying to, here's the thing. I'm not trying to be those guys that, but wait, there's more. Let me load 15 more accessories. This does not need a USB charger. Oh crap, this needs a USB charger. Ha! <laughs> uh, coming back on that. Let's try it again and see how we're doing. So just kind of pick it up around the clamp. I think it's better. See if we can make it just a little bit better yet. Yeah, because I can slide back. Yeah, I think I can live with that. as close as I can.
might be the way to go. Now on this one, I got to remember I got a cord going through there, so don't hit that. <laughs> it's coming out the side. I'm going to put a two-inch one in there. there. Problem solved. Aren't you glad you don't got to watch all of the footage of this after I edit it all? This is kind of cool. The Because I use the circle that's close to the right size here, this section right here in front of these lights is where it hits, so it's not hitting the trigger. So it just drops in there and I don't have to worry about hitting the trigger. Man, everything's too short. <laughs> Okay, I see one mistake I made. I had meant to... Yeah, I offset by half an inch more than I meant to, or vice versa. That'll keep it all nice and tidy. That's actually, I like that. Okay. Yeah, I think that's, that's what I want. And I got enough tool sticking out to grab it still. You kind of just have to have faith in the uh, in the process, I guess. I mean, obviously, if I had CAD or something like that, I probably could have knocked something like this out. But just so what where the mistake was is this one here. I just cut the end off. But the table saw that worked nice for cleaning up the edges. That's good enough, right? And it is heavy, but it balances pretty good now. So where I move the handles, that seemed to help. It'll just put a little bit of tension on these guys, on the tools. So that they all have, they're, they're all resting instead of trying to go somewhere. And that was kind of what I was waiting to see. I'm leaving the back open right now. Yeah, these guys are hitting. So I would take, oh, that one fell off again. Take that one off, switch them around. Now it clears. All right, let's see how it works, I guess, right? So we're done with the day. We're going to come in. Screwed up already. Let's go ahead and plug it in. So we'll plug it in up here for now. Nothing came on. Reach back, find the switch. Click. Okay. And yeah, I had no trouble finding the switch once I moved where it was. I've got enough room to actually grab the battery there too. That's kind of cool. I might do something about that because it kind of bugs me. Come back in a year and see if it's been fixed. That is honestly better than I could have hoped. I know I set the bar kind of low. I haven't tried it with the batteries down here. How bad is it? It's really not bad. And it's kind of like balance is weird, but a hundred times better than it was before. And if I just put a finger on here to hold it down, yeah, the, the you can see they try to pull up. 
but that works a lot better. If I thought I was never going to move this, and if I screwed this down to the bench, <laughs> that would be a non-issue, but yeah. The battery chargers have just a little bit of slack, but not very much. It's a hundred times better than it was last time. Cool. Yeah, 19, about 19 and a quarter, 19 and a half, so it's wider than it was gonna be. Um, the depth should be right at 12 inches. Yeah, depth is right at 12, which is fine. And we got plenty of clearance back here. The cords are mostly tucked in. They're a little bit flapping right now, but not too bad. And the height, not that this matters very much. Yeah, we're right at 12 inches. Like the highest point of the batteries or the tools is about 12 inches. So we're pretty close. The original 16 by 12 by 12. You know, that wasn't hard. What would be the word? It wasn't set in stone anyway. And... Now I got the, the recip saw in there. This is one of those nice things that, you know, you wish everybody would do, you know. Because I, I, I've got a bunch of jigsaw blades that once you open the pack, oh, that's, that's the long one. This was the bonus blade. Now they're all kind of contained together. Cool. Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully you got something useful out of that. Lots of normal stuff. Like and subscribe and share and Patreon.